As we've talked about before, a computer can do two things, store state and manipulate state. In this lecture, we will focus on state storage and specifically how to track how state changes over time when looking at a register file. We're going to look at a very simple register file that has a total of two registers, R0 and R1. And that's indicated here by these address bits. And then we're going to have, it's going to have four bits stored in each register as indicated by the data lines here. So imagine we have a data um, system here and we're going to have this timing diagram that we're going to fill in. And what we're going to pay attention to is there's a couple other signals we need to make sure we are aware of. We have the write enable signal. When this is one, we will write data to the selected register which is indicated by the write address signal. So if it's zero, we write at register zero. If it's one, we write to register one. The reset signal sets all registers to have the value stored zero, and this is set asynchronously, so no matter what happens um, with the clock, the reset will set the all the registers to have value zero. And then we have the clock, which will set the chosen register to one, when write enables one, and the um, right the address, the write address is telling us which address is being written to. And then what we care about is what ha is on the outputs here in read data A, read data B, given the sequence of events. So we know which data is coming out by no by looking at the read address A, read address B. So looking at our timing diagram, the first thing you'll notice is that the reset is one here and zero everywhere else. So this tells us for certain that read da data A and read data B are register zero and register one rather are both zero to start. And then we can look at our read data A and read data B to figure out which registers are being read. So here we're reading register one, here we're reading register two, zero. So because we know uh, registers being read. Register 1 is 0 for this first clock cycle. And register B is also 0 for this clock cycle. Notice that we're ignoring um, what is cha the va changing values of the write data at this point. During the, at the clock edge, we notice that the write address is 0. The read data, the write data is 1 and the write enable is one. So that means we are going to write to register zero and we're going to write the value one into register zero. So we need to see which, um, we notice that read data B is storing, is letting us read from register zero. So we're going to notice that this is going to change immediately at the clock edge to reflect the change in register zero. Register A uh, read data A, on the other hand, is going to be still looking at register 1, so we're not going to see a change during this clock cycle for read data A, whereas we do see that change in read data B. All right, so in this next clock cycle, what we're going to pay attention to is we're going to see is, so reset is still one, 0, write enable is 1, the re write data is 2, and the write address is one. So we're going to write to register two, given those conditions at this clock edge. So register one is gonna become two. And we're still reading from register one for uh, read data A. So we're going to switch that to value two. And that's going to stay until the read changes. So we'll handle that in just a moment, whereas the read data B stays reading register zero the entire time for this clock period. So it's going to stay one for the entire duration of this clock cycle. Okay, so the important thing here is that we're changing read address A from one to zero mid clock cycle. So that's going to force this value to change immediately when we see that happen. And so the read data A is gonna switch from two to one mid clock cycle. Next, we're gonna pay attention to is that the write enable is zero 
for the next two clock cycles. So nothing is going to change inside of the register. So we don't have to worry about reading or writing or the read the writes changing what's in there. We just have to see if the read address has changed. So here in this clock cycle, A stays the, the same for the entire clock cycle. So nothing changes here. Whereas the read address for B changes mid clock cycle. So we're going to have a one um, coming out of this guy, so it's going to be it's going to be one up until here, and then it's going to switch its read value to two right before the end of the clock cycle. So for this clock edge, we see that the write enable is zero, so we're not going to change any values in our registers. But we're, so we have to just pay attention to see if our read addresses change. And so here with A, we see that the address changes mid clock cycle from register zero to register one. So the value being read will change from one to two during this clock cycle. The read address for B stays the same. This is the registers and the read, read address are staying the same. Nothing changes for B. Next clock cycle, we see that write enable is one again. We see that the write address is zero right before the clock edge and the write data is five. So that means we're gonna to write to register five at this clock, sorry, register zero, and we're gonna write the value five into it during this clock edge. And that means that any, reg any read data that's reading from register zero will change. We'll notice that both reg reg uh, read data A and read data B are reading from register one, so neither of them changes during this clock cycle. They're both still reading the value two. So even though the register values are changing, we're not seeing a change on the outputs. Next clock cycle, we see that the write enable is one, the write address is one. So that means we're going to write the value six to register one. And that will force our read datas to, if they're reading from register one, to switch to six at the clock edge. So uh, read data A is going to change to six at the clock edge. And read data B is also going to change to six on the clock edge. And it's going to stay that way for the whole clock cycle because the read data does not change. Whereas the read data A address changes to zero mid clock cycle. So it's going to switch to five during that clock edge. Then the final thing that we see is that the write enables zero, so nothing is going to change inside of our registers. And so, and since the re read data read addresses stay the same, the read data will also stay the same.